I suppose it's a sign uh, that one has been in ministry long enough when one starts repeating stories. So if you've heard this story before, uh, and I, I, I do tell it a lot, actually, um, but if you've heard this story before, uh, just bear with me, uh, because in its own way, it's, well, it's worth repeating always, but in its own way, it's, it's kind of a timeless story, uh, and it might take you somewhere a little bit different this time. So um, it, was, uh, it was a service of lessons and carols for Christmas uh, when I was a kid when this happened. Uh, and I, I, if you have not had one of these moments, I, I hope you, sincerely hope you do. Uh, in fact, I hope you have many of these kind of moments. But it was, it was a service of lessons and carols, which is this, uh, it, if you're Anglican, you know exactly what it is, but um, it, it was started by the uh, King's College in Cambridge. And it's nine readings from Scripture and with, with carols. Um, for everybody to sing, and also for choirs, and so um, churches that have, have big choirs particularly like to do it. Uh, but it's a really nice way to tell the story at Christmas because uh, it starts at the beginning, the, the very, very beginning. And there, so there are nine readings. There's a, there's a way of, there's a proper way, of course, um, and people do variations of it. Um, the, the proper way, of course, is that the readings start with a child, and as you progress to the ninth reading, you progress through the, this is so Anglican, hierarchy of the congregation in the church. So your ninth reading should be, at the very least, um, the, the priest or the minister of the congregation. Um, if you're really lucky, you, you, you score a bishop. And one year, when I was a kid, we scored a bishop. It was Bishop Alan Reed. And uh, Alan, uh, Alan Reed was a, a wonderful, he was a wonderful priest. Uh, he was a very kind and gentle man. He was a very wise man also. Uh, I believe I've quoted him more than a few times. Um, thing is, when you're a kid, Alan looked and sounded and moved exactly like Big Bird from Sesame Street. Exactly. And he was also like six and a half feet tall and really thin, which did not help. Um, but he looked and sounded and moved just like Big Bird. And so, of course, when you're a precocious little bratty choir boy kid, that's not who you want reading that ninth reading. <laughs> but that's who we got that year. And so we, we went through the service. We got to the ninth reading and uh, Bishop Reed was supposed to go to the pulpit where there was the big Bible and read the first 18 verses of John. And instead, he went and stood in the crossing uh, with no, no book and no microphone. And he looked out at the cathedral, which was full of people. There was not an empty seat. And he said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And he proceeded through the first 18 verses. I'm going to describe it as the first 18 verses of the Gospel of John. He didn't recite it from memory. He didn't say it. It was, it was like he spoke it into being. It was the most amazing moment. It did not sound like Big Bird at all. For me, it was the most amazing moment because it was the, the first moment I can recall being in touch with Scripture. It's that, that moment of uh, John Wesley, famously, uh, used the expression... Um, he felt his heart strangely warmed, connected. Like the story wasn't just, it wasn't just a story from a book. It wasn't just something that some elderly gentleman solemnly intones from the pulpit. It was alive. Alive. 
I hope that you've had a moment like that. And if you haven't, I hope you do. Um, but for me, for me, it was, it was a real moment because it, not only did I feel connected to the story, uh, it was foundational for me because it was that piece of uh, understanding, knowing God, that is about knowing how God is from the beginning and is in all things. Um, and that we are, we are not alone because we are connected. We are, we are with God. And it was just, it was, it was uh, amazing. Anyway, I, I just also wanted to say, by the way, I, because I was thinking about that this week, um, I thought to myself, I wonder what happened to Bishop Reed. And by the way, he was later Bishop of Ontario. Um, and unfortunately, he, of course, has, has died because he was quite elderly at the time. And, but I was reading a, an article about him. And as it happens, he and his wife uh, worked uh, quite extensively in several Mohawk communities in Ontario. And they gave him a name. And I'm not even going to pretend that I know how to pronounce it, um, but they gave him a Mohawk name that translates into the one who lights the way. Exactly like the story. The one who lights the way. So Matthew and uh, Luke both have uh, have birth stories for Jesus, quite unconventional ones, but conventional in their own way. Um, Mark dives right in with the good news of, of Jesus uh, and the arrival of John the Baptist, so Jesus as an adult. But, but they both begin with Jesus. The Jesus we know, the Jesus of the manger. John begins at the beginning, the very beginning. While we might want to spend more time at the manger, we do sooner or later realize it's time to move on, and we put all this stuff away. The moment's over. For some people, the moment passed on Christmas Eve. For others, it might extend a little while. But the fact is, it's a moment in a story, and we move on. Where do we go from here? Oh, that's easy. In the story, in the story, what happens is the Magi arrive, and then the Magi are warned to go home a, a different way, um, which in its own way is an interesting story. Um, but, of course, Herod is out to get Jesus now, so an angel warns Joseph that they should run to Egypt. And so he picks up everybody and off they go. And then the very next piece of the story that we have, if you're really lucky, is that story about Jesus as a child in the temple where they lose him. And then we're on to Jesus as an adult. Which is right where Mark starts, by the way. And in fact, both Matthew and Luke do the same thing. They literally leap through all of those years to Jesus as an adult. So we've moved on. Hang on, though. Even I can remember a time, thankfully when I was much, 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 much younger, when we still talked about how Jesus knew everything that was going to happen. It was all preordained. It was all going, we knew what was going to, he knew what was going to go on. I have questions about that. That's like saying Mary knew everything. Just because the angel said, your child will be the son of God, that Mary knew all that stuff was good. I don't for a second think that's the case because we're human beings and we live through things. That's our way, right? We're constantly reminded. In fact, Ecclesiastes, right? There's a time for everything. But the point is we don't know how much time we have, right? I'm very mindful of that this week. Um, but the point is that's how we live, we are born, we live, we die, and so we have a time frame. That's how we tell the story. Not John. 
not John. John looks bigger. John looks more expansive. I imagine the person who wrote that, whoever it was, thinking to themselves, there's something bigger than this, and I am part of it. And, and I think that's the message of Jesus. We are not just this frail human body that travels in a timeline that we think, you know, it's literally one step after the, there's past, there's future, there's all of that stuff. We're something bigger than that. And we're connected to something bigger than that. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And nothing was created without that one. So, just before Christmas, I, I was reading, uh, Alan Richards sent me a paraphrase of that that he'd done, in which, <laughs> instead of saying the word, it says love. And I, I really, I really like that. I really connected with that, because I think whatever language we use for God we are talking about the same thing. But we connect with different ways of saying that. So the author of the Gospel of John might say the word, thinking to themselves, I understand that means, like, that is the power of creation and creativity and energy. of the, And others might say love, because that is the language of Jesus. And I know you're thinking, okay, so... But in the beginning, you can't kind of then leap to leap Jesus and use Jesus' language to describe it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can, because that's the point. Is that energy, that word, that love, that power of life and creation and creativity is eternal and always. And while we are here in this, we are here, but we are still part of that. We come from it, we return to it. Wherever we go, it is. So here's John reminding us. You can tell a story. It it can be a narrative. But within that story is a power, a energy, a a force, a love that is greater than that little narrative and has been and will be greater than that little narrative always. So, like Bishop Reed, we are the ones who, we are all the ones who light the way for others, for each other, for ourselves. Because the light is in us too, right? That's the thing about Jesus. Jesus grows up to show us that, to show us not only how we could live, but also what is within us, that we are divine and human, that we are all of that stuff. And it's all powered by love. So here we are at the beginning of a year, a new year, because Chronological time apparently is important, um, it, but it, it is. I was just thinking that the other we, uh, this morning we were talking about uh, New Year's Eve. What did you do for New Year's Eve? And and I said I believe at New Year's Eve I shouted upstairs to Lori Happy New Year because she was upstairs that her Katie's daughter was there and she was taking care of her and and so and it was just from one moment to the next. Well, it was that, literally, from one moment to the next. It's it's great to to frame the new year as it's a new year. So it's going to be different. That's done. Let's move on. But it's not done. It's still there because it's part of us. 
and the days ahead are part of us. And that's, that's the point of being the light, is we can go ahead carrying forward the same shadows that we have the past year. And we can live there still. Or we can be the light. It, it doesn't mean in, everything's instantly happy and better and good and everything. It means that we live in love. And we share that love with each other. We, we love instead of hate. We, we take a moment and pause before we respond with anger and instead maybe find a way to patiently find our way to kindness, caring, understanding. And instead of responding without having even heard what was said, maybe we'll listen. That would be enlightening. Jesus is the one, perhaps, who shows us the light that is in all of us, the love that is in all of us, and how we can live that into the world. But it's in you. And as you step forward into the new year, as we all step forward into the new year, we take the light with us. We all have the opportunity to light the way forward. So we may not know exactly where we go from here, but we know how to go. We know how to go because Jesus and others have showed us the way. And now it is our turn to show the way. To light the way for everyone.